So I have been watching the state of the culture for the last several weeks. And I had a few thoughts about it. My first thought was that this show is going to implode. It won't last. And let me explain why I think so. First things first, they have a lot of big personalities on this panel, which in some regards, that's a good thing because I don't think you want people to have groupthink. I think that it's important to have people who have different opinions and come from different walks of life and have different cultural experiences, all right? The problem here is, is that you have a lot of toxic energy coming together and that really just spells bad news. Let me start with Remy Ma. I have liked Remy Ma for a while. I like the fact that her husband waited on her when she got out of prison and she was able to rebuild her life. But lately, I have not been rocking with her because what I have found about Remy Ma is that she just spouts a lot of black male masculinity, toxic male masculinity nonsense. And for the record, I love my black men. This is not a male bashing video. So if that's what you think it is, it is not. But some of the same bullshit that sometimes you hear out of men, black men especially, is what she says. I was disgusted with her when she said this last thing about R. Kelly. Well, you know, he couldn't have possibly done what he did because, you know, um, they don't eat ass. Rapists don't eat ass. I mean, she sounded so retarded that I, I just couldn't stomach her anymore. It was like she tries to play the voice of reason. She tries to be on both sides or side, try to see all angles. But Remy, this ain't it. You cannot sit here on one hand and bash a man like Vic Menza for speaking out on Triple X. But then in the same breath, you will sit there and basically, I don't know, um, sidled up to a rapist, a pedophile like R. Kelly and say, well, he couldn't have possibly did that. I mean, I don't really know. Or the whole Bill Cosby thing. Or Fabulous, who you knew he knocked his wife's tooth out, but you still is rocking and defending this guy. How hypocritical can you really be? Seriously, a lot of bullshit that comes out of your mouth. I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that you have. And you know what? What I found is that I believe Remy certainly has a, a lot of more men taking up for her. And then you go, Remy. I love you, Remy. I love you, Remy. Because she thinks just like them. Now, I appreciate her take on the fact that, yes, yeah, she's been in jail, so she does have sympathy for people that have been accused of stuff. And I understand that. I absolutely understand that. But come on, Remy. We all have eyes. We saw R. Kelly piss on that little girl. So the fact that you can still sit here and act like you just really doubt that he really did this. And a lot of times she comes comes off like, you know, she's basically blaming females for what they do. Sometimes it is a female's fault. But with R. Kelly, I'm just not rocking with that. And some of the stuff you said was just ridiculous. You need to just stop talking sometimes. And for the record, I felt like R Remy Ma really wasn't a good fit for this panel simply because she is still part of the industry. She is still making music. And so that will always render her biased. I see how she can never, ever, ever see the wrong in some of the artists that they talk about. You may have never noticed that she never sees the wrong in anything Cardi B does. It's all good, it's all gravy. She never, ever, ever can see the wrong in some of the people because she's too close to them to give an honest opinion. So, Remy, do better. Next up is, um, what's her? Oh, Scotty Beam. Scotty Beam reminds me of Black Twitter come to life. She is like the woke Black Twitter personified. That they have all the answers. They know it all. They all they're so hypersensitive about everything. They get so over the top, hypersensitive about everything that happens. I think that's because she comes off to me as a black feminist. 
And if you've ever watched a video of mine a long time ago, I don't rock with black feminists. I don't think that black women should ever align themselves with white feminists. I just don't. I think that that's a mistake because white feminists never align themselves with black people's issues, especially black women. Because again, let me go back to R. Kelly. If white women or white feminists align themselves with black women, R. Kelly would have been gone years ago. The problem I have with Scotty Bean is that even if she has a valid argument, she, she loses the argument by whining and flailing and, and sounding like a little, you know, just wounded puppy every time she speaks. She has not learned how to debate without taking things personal. You can have a difference of opinion with somebody, but you don't have to debate like you're whining and that's how she sounds. And then on one hand, I find her a little hypocritical because on that episode where they were talking about Vic Menza and Triple X and how they canceled Vic Menza and they didn't want to hear anything he had to say, even though he was reformed, he was a reformed abuser, so to speak. She still was rocking with like other, like Chris Brown is like Chris Brown gets passed. And listen, by the way, this is not a Chris Brown bashing. I love Chris Brown. That's not me saying that. I'm just saying she picks and chooses who she wants to rock with. So you can't have it both ways. Like I said, I hope that she will learn that it's, it's, you don't have to take it as a personal attack when you are having a debate with somebody. Joe might get louder, but you don't have to go there with them. Okay. I'm going to get on Joe next. But again, I think that she won't make it if she keeps flailing and not understanding how a debate works. You can get your point across by communicating a lot better, um, Scotty Bean. And people will listen. Right now, a lot of people are tuning out and they want you gone. They want you gone because, again, you sounded like one of those feminazis. They think that you never, ever, ever see the other side. I don't think you hate men, but you are coming off like you do. Next up is Joe Budden. Now, I'll be the first to say I love the Joe Budden podcast. But lately, Joe been on one. He thinks that by screaming, by yelling and screaming, he's right. People think when you get they get louder, that makes them more right. It doesn't make you right. It just makes you loud and wrong. And Joe does this all the time on his podcast, and he does it here. All right? I thought that he would be a good moderator, and I think that he really is good in what he does. I loved him when he was with uh, Academics. When he was on Complex, I loved his show. I thought him and Academics made a great team, and I was sorry to see that that didn't work out. But Joe has to do better because he is going to have an aneurysm on this show if he does not get it together. You can still have valid arguments without losing your shit every week. The best thing to do is you're probably one of the older of the four of you on that panel. Your job is to wheel them back in, to moderate, all right? You kind of do that on your own show you know, the Joe Budden podcast. Like I said, even if Scotty Beam is saying something that you think is hella stupid, you've got to learn not to scream at her like that. That that just comes, it's a bad look. Even if she is all the way wrong, there has to be a better way. And not to tell her or not to say, well, you hate, you you must have been, somebody hurt you. That was just kind of foul when he said that. Now, I don't know much about Jinx. I don't. So I really cannot... I don't know much about his background to say much more than I do think that he is an intelligent black man. I think that he's very measured. I think that he probably does more research than anybody on that panel. He seems to to me to be the most level-headed of all of them. And I wish that Joe, Scotty Beam, and Remy would take a page out of his book because he seems to understand how this goes, right? You don't have to scream and yell. That might be Joe's MO, I get it. Whining might be Scotty Beam's MO. Remy Ma is supposed to play the, the vi- not the villain, so to speak, but you know, she's taken up for the black man. I get it, and that, if that's how they wanna play that, that's fine, but I just don't think it's going to work forever. I think eventually somebody is going to get cussed out on that panel, all right? They are getting there. They are getting there. They're getting to the point where, right, they might smile and look all good for the camera, 
but deep down inside, I think that they really don't rock with each other like that. And it's going to get to the point where they cannot stand to be in the same room with each other. And they're going to have to learn how to communicate better if this show is going to work. I think it's a great concept. I think they got something special here. As annoying as Scotty Beam can be, I don't think she should leave. As toxic as I think Remy is, <laughs> ooh, Remy, it's hard for me to take up for you, for real. I'm sorry. You really probably should not be there. But other than that, I think that this show can work if they figure out how to make it work without like just bringing all these bad elements together that just doesn't work.